I was testing out my game recently and came across a really strange issue. I noticed that sometimes it wouldn't register all of my keyboard presses. To be more specific, you can press the spacebar to jump, and pressing the up arrow key and the spacebar at the same time results in a higher jump. You can do this while walking as well. But for some reason, while walking to the left, the up jump wouldn't work. As it turns out, all keyboards are not created equal. Some keyboards, in an effort to save money, have limitations that simply don't detect certain key combinations. That all being said, I need some way so that all players will be able to play this game as intended, regardless of their own keyboard's limitations. I'm thinking that the best way to do this is to implement some kind of key binding system, where you can choose which keys map to different actions in-game. This is useful beyond just the keyboard problem. It's a nice quality of life thing to have, and it's also very important to include for accessibility. If someone with a disability has any trouble pressing these standard keys that I have mapped for the game, they'd be able to map out those keys to different ones, or even better, map to buttons on a different controller that makes the whole experience more comfortable for them. And this key binding system is essentially what I ended up doing. I figured I'd pull up the code here and show you the setup for it, since it's pretty simple and something like this should be implemented into really any project. If we take a look at the player.lua code, we can see that this code right here is what's making the player move to the right. And we see that this code is triggered whenever the keyboard is pressed down for the right arrow key. And this is where the problem is. We are specifically looking for this string right. It can't change from that currently. And we can see it's doing the same thing for the left direction as well. Ideally, we would have these values stored in some variable that the player would be able to change to different strings that map to different keys on their keyboard. To accomplish this, I created the controller, which is just a new object or table that stores these strings in their own variables. And you can see that in something like right here. We have a controller.right, left, up, down, and jump. Those are the five different actions that you can do for this game. You can move right and left, you can hold up or down to do different moves, and then the jump key is corresponding currently to the space bar. And these are the default values here. And what's nice is that I can now just take this controller.write, copy this over to player.lua, and now instead of checking for specifically this write string, we can check for controller.write. And similarly, we'll check for controller.left for left. And this is useful because if we ever want to change what key maps to this action right here, this keyboard is down for moving to the right, all we have to do is update this controller.write with a new string. And same with controller.left. So now anywhere in the code where we're doing some input from the player, we're now reading the string from the controller object. And this is demonstrated very nicely because I wrote this set layout method. Now the set layout method accepts some string for which layout we want to map to. And I have two layouts so far. I have the standard one, which is just the default one, but I also have WASD. And you can see that when this code here is triggered, it changes each of the inputs to map to a WASD layout. And I can actually demonstrate this right now. In main.lua, I have this section right here that calls the set layout function and sets the input layout to be WASD. So in game, you can see that in the upper left corner in the debug window, I have a set to the standard layout, which means that I use the arrow keys to move and the space bar to jump. But if I press the one key, which calls that set layout function, we are now in the WASD layout, which means that now my arrow keys don't do anything and the space bar doesn't jump. Instead, we're now using WASD to move around. We have successfully changed the layout to something else with completely different buttons mapped for each action. But this is only the first step. Ideally, we want to be able to let the player choose exactly which keys on their keyboard they want to map to which actions. It should be any key that they want. Accomplishing this involves two steps. We first need to trigger the game to start listening for a new keyboard input. And the second step is to then take whatever key the player presses on their keyboard and remap it to whatever input that we're listening for. And this process is accomplished pretty easily. I have this listen property for the controller, and it starts off at nil. 
And if listen is ever set to be anything other than nil, then that means that we are currently listening for new input. So if I were to set listen to be, let's say, jump, then that means now the game is listening for new input for controller.jump. And we set the listen property by using this controller listen for method. It accepts some input value, and then controller.listen becomes that input value. So again, if I were to pass in the jump string into this, we would suddenly be listening for controller.jump. Or I could pass in right, left, up, or down. And again, I can test this out very easily. I have some debug steps here, where if I were to press the 2 key, our controller is going to start listening for right. Or actually, better yet, let's change this to jump. And then, once it's listening for jump, at any point after that, we now have the if controller.listen, which essentially asks, is controller.listen anything other than nil? And if it is, then we're going to set controller for that input equal to key, which in this case, key is coming from love.keypressed. Therefore, key just represents whatever the next key the player presses on their keyboard is. So back in the game, I use the arrow keys to move and the space bar to jump. Now, when I press the two key, we are now listening for the jump input. And at this point, since it's listening, whatever the next key I press on my keyboard is, that's going to be remapped to the jump input. So I'm going to press the P key. So now when I press spacebar, nothing happens because we remapped it. And then when I press the P key, we do our jumps. The arrow keys are still the same. That whole process hasn't changed at all. All we did was change the jump button. And this essentially accomplishes what I set out to do. The player is now able to change what inputs map to what actions in game. Of course, in the final product, we don't want the two key to be what triggers this listen for function. That was just for the demonstration and for testing this out. Instead, when I implement some kind of menu for the game, we're going to have a key binding system in the menu where the player will be able to choose what input they want to map. And in that case, it's going to call this exact function for whatever input that we want to change. And I'm very excited to have this feature in the game since it overcomes that keyboard issue that I was talking about earlier, but overall it makes the game more accessible as well. And that about wraps up this video. Be sure to let me know what you thought of this new format. This format is kind of nice because you get to hear my whole thought process and how I did things. You get to see the actual code that I wrote. And of course you get to see my gorgeous face. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and thanks a lot for watching.